We've come a long way from Super Friends, haven't we? What once was a joke of a movie from Entourage has now become a multi-million dollar worldwide hit. The, the suit will not look like that on film. Tom Cruise is like 5'4". On screen, he looks like Yao Ming. Yes, Aquaman is here, and it's filled with plenty of small nods to the wider world beyond just DC Comics. Here are some of the small details in Aquaman you may have missed. And if you haven't seen the movie yet, stick some seaweed over your eyes, you dummy! There are spoilers in these waters. When Atlanta and Tom, Aquaman's Aquamom and Aquadad, meet for the first time, we got a glimpse into some of the ways Tom liked to spend his free time. You know, when he's not rescuing washed-up merwomen from the rocks down near the edge of his lighthouse. If any moviegoers watched a lot of serial children's TV in the 1960s, they might have noticed that Tom had an episode of Stingray playing on his television. That is, right before Atlanta threw her trident through it once she regained consciousness. Stingray, for those who aren't familiar, concerned a heroic submarine crew that discovers civilizations secretly living on the ocean's floor, and the high adventure hijinks that ensue as a result of that discovery. All things considered, it's a pretty fitting television choice for Tom, if maybe a little on the nose. Eagle-eyed fans might have spotted a book featuring the works of H.P. Lovecraft on one of Tom's tables. While Lovecraft is known for lots of weird contributions to horror and pop culture, his best-known invention is probably Cthulhu, an ancient type of cosmic sea monster who has a whole bunch of tentacles on his octopus face. The various civilizations we see throughout Aquaman, as well as the secret ocean in the center of the world and particularly the sea monster who guards Atlan's trident, all seem to be at least partially inspired by Cthulhu and the rest of Lovecraft's creepy writing. While Aquaman director James Wan may not necessarily be a household name just yet, fans of horror movies are extremely familiar with his work. Wan became well known for his work on The Conjuring movies, which feature a pair of paranormal investigators who, well, go and investigate the paranormal. And one of those creepy supernatural things is the Annabelle doll, which viewers could spot sitting near Mira's ship shortly after she brings Arthur down to the ocean to begin their adventure. And that's not the only reference back to The Conjuring series of movies. Patrick Wilson, who played King Orm, has appeared in both Conjuring films as Ed Warren, who's based on a real-life ghost chaser from which the movie franchise takes its inspiration. And while we're on the subject of Patrick Wilson, this isn't even the first time he's appeared in a Warner Brothers superhero movie. Back in 2009, he appeared as Night Owl in Zack Snyder's Watchmen adaptation. Randall Park made a couple of memorable appearances on Aquaman's fictional TV network GBS as Dr. Stephen Shin. Even for Aquaman, Shin is pretty obscure compared with the rest of the character's comics history. Shin debuted in 2011's DC Comics reboot as an ally of Arthur's. But Shin comes into conflict with Arthur when the hero refuses to reveal the secret location of Atlantis. Based on the film's single post credit scene, where Shin and Black Manta seem to team up, chances seem good that Shin's role will be expanded by quite a bit in the eventual sequel. 